A pleasant day. We will now discuss about concepts. In the excerpts of Hospers, he described innate concepts and concepts that are learned through experience or concepts that are not innate. Innate concepts, which is based on the perspectives or the findings of Descartes, are concepts that are born into people or starting from the day they were born, they already have these concepts in mind. Um, Hospers argued about such concepts saying that they are not concepts but rather dispositions to behave in certain ways. Uh, examples of this is um, when the body reacts to certain stimuli like pain or being frightened or similar situations. Since the body reacts to stimuli, he says that uh, it is innate dispositions or simply part of our genetical stru genetic structure. It is not concepts. It is not innate concepts to, to the person itself. Um, continuing on, the, he also mentioned the Learn concepts or concepts that are gained through experience, which was supported by Locke, John Locke, Berkeley, and Hume, uh, where it is stated that concepts are gained through experience. We can gain experience through our outer senses or the five senses of the body. Um, we have our sight. Our smell, our taste, our hearing, our touch. Um, this is also called the ideas of sensation by John Locke. The five senses gains experiences by, for example, if you smell something new, you experience a new smell and therefore you conceptualize uh, such experience. Uh, if you hear a new sound, likewise, you gain experience with regards to a new sound and you conceptualize what that sound is. Another way of gaining experience is through our inner senses or the emotions. This is also called the ideas of reflection by John Locke. It, it, it is said that to first gain an experience about a certain emotion, you must first feel such emotions. You must first feel happy in order to experience being happy and as a and as an impl implication be able to conceptualize what happiness is or at least uh, have a concept of what being happy is likewise it can be it can also be said about being sad being angry anxious and many other different types of um emotions. To further explain this, Hume differentiated ideas from impression. Impressions is when you see something, whereas ideas is when you imagine something. A very good example would be an impression is when you see a red book. Yeah. For example, you're walking down the street or you're walking uh, in the library and you saw um, a red book on a shelf. That's an impression. It gives you the impression of a book that is colored red. Whereas an idea is when you imagine the, red, the said red book. For example, you are already at your house resting or sitting down on a couch or lying down on your bed and you remember the red book that you saw in the library that is ideas or the, uh, the concept of ideas Hume also said that without having an impression you cannot have an idea it is argued upon by the fact that we can imagine without an impression of the subject in question a good example of this would be a golden mountain or mythological creatures like centaurs and 
similar creatures. So in response to such uh, arguments, Locke introduced complex and simple ideas or concepts. Simple ideas are those that are created through impression or those that are created through what you see or what you perceive through your either outer senses or inner senses. Whereas a complex ideas are mixtures of simple ideas and sometimes other complex ideas. That goes uh, to, that goes along with the idea of a golden mountain. We have the impression of the color gold or gold itself as an uh, as a metal, and we have the impression of a mountain, what a mountain looks like, and its structure. So. In order to make the idea of a golden mountain without having first an impression of a golden mountain, we simply mixed our impression of gold and mountain. Therefore, once mixing it, we come upon the idea of a golden mountain without actually having an impression of a golden mountain. Yes. In, this, uh, in that sense, it is said that humans can create complex ideas through their imagination but not simple ideas as simple ideas requires impression and continuing on we have concepts and images images are memories of what we perceive with both the inner and outer senses so they are a reminiscence or memory of what we've experienced or with the inner and outer senses that we have Whereas concepts, concepts are those that can be similar yet different, can also be very different from images because they can be within the grasp of our senses or completely away from our own senses. So for example, um, for example, of those that is within the grasp of our senses is um, for example, the concept of love, we, uh, we, for some reason, we have an idea about what the concept of love is. We have experience, or say most of us have experienced um, love, uh, the emotion of love. Therefore, it is within the grasp of our senses, uh, particularly our inner senses. Um, an example of a concept that is with outside the grass of our senses is ultraviolet light ultraviolet light is not an emotion therefore it's not with, it's not in the grass of our uh, inner senses also ultraviolet light is not within the grass of our uh, of our outer senses because ultraviolet light is outside the visible light spectrum whereas we cannot see ultraviolet light yet we clearly have a concept with regards to what ultraviolet light is. Now, according to Hospers, there are different meanings and definitions to what a concept is, all with their corresponding limitations and loopholes. Number one, um, it is said that we have a concept if we can define such concept. Now, according to Hospers, this is very restrictive or very narrow. Now, to say the least, that we can define uh, simple words like a dog, a cat, left, right, up and down. But he argued that defining a word is not required in having a concept. Whereas defining a word is hard. Even dictionaries and other compilers have a hard time doing so. And some words like sweet, red, and let's say blue are hard to define verbally second is that we have a concept if we can use it correctly in a sentence although it does not require us to give a definition in, only in uniform correctness according to the excerpt there may be some confusion with regards to how the word is perceived for example again 
with the most common example in the excerpts, the color red. The color red is perceived differently by blind people, meaning they have a different uh, conceptualization or the different, a different idea of the color red than sighted people. And as Hospers has described or has stated in his um, excerpts, it is still restrictive because it, it needs it needs us or it requires us to be acquainted with the word in question or the word for the concept in order for the concept to be viable whereas one can think up of an idea of the concept without having to without first having a known word for it he argued that scientists uh, may have not known the word energy, but have the criteria or have the, uh, what we, we could say, idea of what energy is before they even thought up of the word energy itself. Third, we have a concept, we can distinguish it from other concepts. Now, although this definition enables us to have a concept without first um being able to give a proper word for it, Hospers argued that it could be contradicted to by being able to differentiate, for example, concept X and concept Y from each other is because it is a consequence or an effect of having the concept of X, but rather not what concept the concept of X does for our fourth and final uh, definition, he Hosper has described that we have a concept if we have a criterion in mind. And although Hosper described this definition uh, or a uh, meaning as very independent, as all it requires is a mental state or recognition of what the criterion in mind has to be we do not have to or to say the least it's independent from having to differentiate such concepts to other concepts but he said that it is not easy to state such criterion in mind and he also said that one would know that someone or he or she actually has a criterion in mind if uh, we can distinguish such concept from other concepts would that would which would actually just return us to the definition or the meaning of number three lastly hospers answered is it to say that all concepts are based on experience well all we know is that according to according to hospers all we know is that complex ideas or concepts are first derived by the experiences or the known simple ideas constituted to it. Yet, for some concepts are for some concepts are made without a clear image. He, for example, he said that um, a person born in slavery without having known freedom or democracy all all of his or her life may be may be able to create or conceptualize freedom and democracy without even having to know the word of uh, the word for freedom and democracy and without having a clear image about freedom and democracy that is all for our discussions of uh, about hospers thank you